Get the ultimate experience in cleanliness and comfort without breaking the bank when you transform your bathroom with Niagara. From toilets to bidets, Niagara has the perfect solution for any bathroom project. Niagara's award-winning products not only outperform the competitors, they also outdesign them. Thanks to innovations like stealth technology, Niagara's environmentally friendly products can use only half as much water as their competitors, conserving water and saving you money. And there's more great news for homeowners. You can now shop for Niagara products on Amazon or HomeDepot.com. Thank you, Niagara. goodness it's a good week to be on a show with a former Dallas Cowboys player I'm John Radigan he's Nate Newton and you know he's going to very sultrily look at the camera very soon and he's going to say those famous <laughs> words Nate let me tell you something good to see you this morning John oh man it's good to see you we appreciate Niagara for bringing us let me tell you something and there is so much to tell you and Nate all I can say to start this show is here we go! Here we go! Yeah, ready, ready. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> uh, hey, and I, I want to get to uh, to cadence and stuff later in the show, but I think first, Nate, we've got to start. We can't bury the lead. We got to start with the starting point, which is that big victory over the Eagles. And I mean, you know, thirty-three to thirteen, Nate. It felt to me like that score, like the game wasn't even as close as that score, and it was a twenty-point win. You know, uh, what we did in the first half was 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 big uh, to watch the Eagles, you know, and it kind of tapered off. And then we had that uh, deal where Fletcher Cox came in and, you know, hit hit Dak for a sack. And uh, then uh, I think it was, uh, I want to say Jordan Davis or Jalen, uh, Jordan Davis, either Jalen uh, Carter, one of those two Jaylen, guys think, scooped yeah. up and scored. And uh, that, that was a good thing, Rad, but – for the first time, I think, you know, out of all of these five games, because I feel, I feel they have to win one more to really have a shot at this thing. But for the first time in five games, uh, you you know, well, I say for the first time, but consistently games were out of, out of reach. And what I mean by that, my inner self, and maybe you can explain how you felt was, you never felt they were in the game. Uh I, I thought that it would be a, a closer game. Uh, I know that Philly has been used to playing big games, but I think for the first time, Philly is starting to feel what we call that post-Super Bowl effect, where whether you win it or whether you lose it, the hunt is on for Red October, and he they are one of those Red Octobers, and teams are coming at them repeatedly with their best games. And now, after the 49er debacle the week before, and then coming in to the Cowboys deal, and we are hyped at home for you know 14 straight, now 15 straight, I think it just was a little bit too much. I think they were just trying to get out of that game healthy just to try to recover this week. Now, in fairness, they were at the end of sort of a murderer's row of games against the best yes. in the NFL. The Cowboys are now just beginning theirs. They go to Buffalo this week, to Miami the following week, Nate. Um, does a game, uh, uh, the success they had against Philadelphia bolster the Cowboys as they head towards this tough stretch, which concludes, of course, with the Detroit Lions at home on the day before New Year's Eve? Yes, I, I think right here is where you test the mental of the Cowboys, you know, people say the metal, the mental, whatever you want to see, even you check your dentals, man, because ivory is hard because that's what it's going to take the Cowboys to be. This is when we started our run, as you reach back, Rad, and you were with me, as we started our run, you won that first big game to show who you were, not to the public, but more to yourself. But Jimmy, and I'm quite sure Coach McCarthy to some extent is saying, fellas, you want to show the world? how serious you are, you know, it's one thing to beat a team that's well above 500. It's another thing to come back and beat another good team. Forget Buffalo's record. I think Buffalo has a good team to have a core, a set core of players who are uh, superstar type players. Uh, 
And if they play at the top of their level, we're going to have a, a ball game on our hands going up to Buffalo this week. It looks like there won't be uh, huge conditions, right? There won't be nine inches of snow. They won't be having to clear the side, you know, the uh, the line markers and all that stuff. Um, does that um, does that favor the Cowboys? Just that it'll be kind of forty and windy or whatever. Well, you know, I, I would like to say that it, it shouldn't make a difference. But cold weather, wind, and you playing in the perfect world of Jerry World, and to, you know that big, that big spaceship that they play yeah. in, and you 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 know you've had two or three games in a row where you've been home and it's been comfortable, seventy two degrees, zero wind factor, you know, tilt the stadium how you want it so the sun won't come in on you. <laughs> hey, anything up under sixty is gonna be tough for the Cowboys because Dak. Your quarterback has to make this adjustment. Your your wide receivers and running backs, and to some extent, everybody on the team is going to have to make sure they're extra warm and stay loose. So it's different things you're going to have to do during this game. And you're going to have to drink twice as much fluid as though you were going into 80-degree heat because you will dehydrate up in that, uh, that, that type of uh, weather. Oh, that's very interesting. Yes. All right, so al- along those lines, let's talk a little bit about this success that the Cowboys have had at home. Um, most players in the NFL, a recent athletic survey, of uh, anonymous survey of players said, you know, I think it's like 70% of the players in the NFL just can't stand turf. And yet, I'm sure nobody on the Cowboys would say that because of the turf at home that they are so successful on. But uh, why are they why are they so good suddenly at home, Nate? They're fast. Uh, they they use their player speed. How fast was Turpin last year uh, up under the old coordinator? But they didn't use him. But now you yeah. get to see Turpin speed. He had the longest run from scrimmage as a as a you know, uh, and I'm talking about handing the ball off on a reverse for 22 yards, and you saw that speed. Uh, you see that you get to see the quickness of Tony Pollard and all of these guys, the CD Lamb catching them quick slants and and breaking uh, runs for long. You, because they, they just good at home and they good on that turf. Now I'm gonna go back a little bit, Rad. Uh, what players begin to understand after about six years are running on that turf. Come Monday and Tuesday, you still are hurting. Come Wednesday, mm-hmm. you still are hurting. And that's when you start realizing the turf ain't no good. And by your seventh mm-hmm. and eighth and ninth year, you want off of it because it's taken away from your career. All that speed and all that quickness and gender. Even when I was a young, a young, a young guy, <laughs> I used to be like, man, I love this turf. Oh, man, you know, you can grip, you can do this. But those days after about the sixth year, when it's time to heal, falling on that stuff, rolling on that stuff is unforgiving. What God's natural grass can do is so much better over the long haul. What's what's the worst turf you ever played on? The link. Philadelphia, sorry, oh, yeah. uh, sorry, sorry. Even the new place, the new place, or just back, back to veteran back, stadium. Back in the day, they they new place is probably just the same. I mean, you gotta yeah. understand. Even up in Buffalo, once the weather drops down around zero, how do you protect that field? How do you preserve it? If you're not gonna rip that turf up every year and replace it with fresh, that stuff gets hard. That stuff wears out. I know they keep maintenance on it and I know turf is better than it was twenty years ago, but not much better. Still it's still basically carpeting placed over concrete. Yeah, just uh you get to go go get old Goodyear tires and break them down. I don't know what yeah rubber they use. I don't want to be the wrong sponsor. Good old yeah. broke down rubber and all of this right here. Get you four inches of slab of cement, put the rubber there, put the green carpet on and throw some more rubber in it. And hey, we got the fastest turf in the world. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So it's fun to watch the Cowboys play at home. Honestly, it hasn't been terrible to watch them play on the road, but they, they haven't been nearly as good on the road. Their their missteps have come on the road. Um, so there's a lot on these next two weeks, Nate. Yes. Yes. It, 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 it would have, we have Buffalo, and then we uh, 
And then you have, is it, ooh, I, wanna, I don't want to say the Commanders. Is the, Detroit is our last game, right? So who did? My, my, Miami is the, oh, the yes. one in between. How can I forget yeah. the fastest <laughs> and newest show on turf, Miami. Yeah. But you know what? Miami got that thing hanging over their head that the Cowboys had up until last week. Can you beat right. a team over 500? You just lost this past week to a team under 500. So Miami's having their hard uh, times right now. They're trying to deal with their identity. A lot of times, Rad, and I know I'm kind of getting off, is when you're a young team still developing, uh, the people think that Miami is there, but they have a new coach, and he's still trying to form his team. Miami is not there yet. Uh, offensively, I think they can do it with anybody. Defensively, can you make the situation of big plays that need to be done? And and, and I'm going to jump back even further. Three turnovers six games ago, Cowboys lost. Three turnovers this past week, Cowboys won convincingly. Uh, they, they still had a few penalties, but not the dumb plays, not the – not running the route deep enough, putting your toe on the line as you're trying to cut up and score a touchdown, uh, guy not checking into the game. You know, we we had another one of those guys not checking with a ref, and it cost them a game, but we'll get into that later. But sometime when you're playing the better competition or you playing within your conference or your division and you need a win, these are the things that can crush you not checking in, stepping on the line, not running the route deep enough, you know, bad penalties at the wrong time. You, Rad, you've been around long enough to know that it, 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 no matter what sport, baseball, you know, uh, you got a hit and run and the guy forget, don't don't read it and don't take off and run. The guy gets a perfect hit and the guy slowed about getting in the run and, and the, the center fit recover and throw him out. So it, it's always something. Basketball, you know, uh, you're trying to go two for one. You know, you got a good a good open shot, but you got a rookie to understand what's going on. And he get, make that extra pass and the clock go off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it, it happens in every sport. Uh, it normally happens to teams that are immature or don't understand the bigness, the enormity of the game. You know, but once everybody understands what's at stake, the focus to detail becomes better. All right, so let's talk about the potential ramifications of this big win, Nate. Um, the Cowboys, you know, I mean, even if both teams win out, the Cowboys lose out on the NFC East because of the tiebreaker. Philly owns the tiebreaker. So um, they wouldn't, <clears throat> excuse me, if both win out, they wouldn't have home field advantage. Would facing Philly again at their place sometime during the playoffs, you know, would the game that happened last Sunday um, still resonate enough with the Cowboys if it's not in their own home? Would they draw from it? Would they be able to duplicate it on the road? That is why I said six in a row. Listen to me, Rahad. Let me tell you something. That is why the old, wily, crusty vet Nate Newton said they needed six in a row. Not only beat Philly at your home, but now go to Buffalo, an adverse situation all around. Their team is good. The weather is kind of going to be hectic. You're, you're not going to face that in Philly if you go that route. So, yes, win against Buffalo, and now that shows that, hey, we can play back-to-back good teams. We can win against back-to-back good teams. Now we can go in any type of weather and deal with that because that's what we had to do. You know, we had to get past the New York Giants. That was our nemesis back then. We had to go up there. Remember the image shoulder? We had to go up there and win that game. Because if you go up there and win that game, that's that's putting the world on notice that we are the Cowboys. We them boys. And speaking of cold in Philadelphia, by the way, the load left game. You remember that one? Yes. The load load left game might have been the coldest I've ever been in my life. And I grew up in Michigan. That was a cold day in <laughs> Philly, Nate. <laughs> Rad, that was a terrible day for me because yeah. the world turned on Nate Newton. The world turned on the fat man, the <laughs> kitchen. Uh, I went in the locker room, and I have never been cussed out 
an ad and call fat son of us more than what I was. <laughs> that day I'm like, hold on, fellas. We played 60 minutes of football virtually three hours here. It come down to one play, 11 guys on offense, and I and it, it, and the world was dropping they, the, the bombs on me. Rad, I mean, we went into that locker room. Troy didn't say nothing but the look he gave me. Michael Irvin cussed me out. Oh. Tony Tober looked at me one speak to me for a week. <laughs> <laughs> That's my roommate. I mean, it was – but, but you know what it did? It galvanized yeah. us. And the following week, the first short yardage play, the first touchdown that was in the red zone, guess what we ran? Load left yeah. and scored. Yeah. And got the first down. We, because we were – we were supreme, even though we lost that game. We were supreme in our confidence, whether we were on the road and whether we was at at home. We were secure in who we were and our physicality. That's kind of how the Forty ers feel. Forty ers have beat up everybody that's supposed to be somebody. They have physically beat them up, and that was our nature back then. Now, can the Cowboys get a little bit more physical? So to the point where no matter what happens in a game, you can go on the road. And when you go to Philly, because Philly make Philly has a good chance of winning out. Two against Washington, one against the Cardinals. Oh, okay. Really? Well, I mean, Washington hadn't showed up for a game in a while, you know, not offensively and defensively. You know, they may have their highlights on defense or they may have a, a spurt here on offense, but Washington hasn't shown up. Load left. New was, York hasn't showed right. up. Uh, I don't know. They got Danny DeVito. They got <laughs> good fellas. Yeah. I, I don't. Uh, bro. Yeah. They just won. They what? Well, they won what? Three in a row. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that it, you know, but I don't hope on other teams. I right. hope on only my team. Yeah. That is the Cowboys. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and to your point, you can't count on Philadelphia losing um, again. Yes. They might, but you can't count on it. And you can't That's count right. on anybody else failing. You got to count on your own self. That's right. That's right. I'm, I'm, let me say this right quick, like, right. You can, Coach Sirianni, whether you like him or not, I think he has the pulse of his team. And I think collectively looking at him, looking at their players, and I tell people, uh, for two weeks in a row, you could tell uh, towards the end of the games, you know, people are, oh, they gave up. No, they didn't give up. Player and coaches were trying to survive these two events. They was just trying to get out of there healthy. Uh, you see right now, A.J. Brown is raising Kane. Why aren't we throwing shorter passes like the Cowboys? Why aren't we doing this? Why You, you get so sensitive to, to uh, this losing because you know that you should be winning are competing better than what you are. And you know as a player, and you know as a coach, the coach is thinking, hey, what can we do to get these players in better position? What And the players are thinking, "What? hey, man, what are we doing wrong here as players, and what can these coaches do to get us in better position? So they're going through their little hiccup, you know, with the new offensive coordinator, the new defensive coordinator. And that's what I tell folks. Philly has their own problems, you know, and once they came off that, uh, like you call it, murderous role, ending with us, the Cowboys, uh, I'm telling you, Coach Sirianni got in his office that night. He probably didn't go home. He probably went to his office, him and the other coaches, and probably even the owner, because I've seen Jerry do the same thing after <laughs> two bad yeah. losses, and say, fellas, what do we do to fix this? Don't believe me. Uh, they, were, he was, they was on the plane huddle up in the front, saying, hey, fellas, starting to say, what do we do to fix this? We... Philadelphia is not that team we saw. Just like when we mm-hmm. played the 49ers, we were not that team. Right. Just when we, you know, just when that bad moves we had with Philly to get first time, you saw a better team. I just don't believe that we we're, we're, we. I don't believe that the 49ers, the Cowboys, Detroit, our Philadelphia will go into the playoffs. And I could be wrong. It has happened before and fall on their face. I think those are the mm-hmm. four best teams. In 
the NFL, not the NFL, not the, just the, the NFC. I'm talking about I think Detroit would be top over in the AFC. I think the 49ers would be top in the, in the same over there. And I, th- and I know uh, Philadelphia will. Now, the Cowboys, I'm going to be reserved about that because they don't bring the back-to-back physicality that I think the other teams bring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. All right, let's go to that cadence thing. NBC ready, was ready? uh Yeah, green NBC 19, was, green 19. They were, NBC was ready, man. <clears throat> I think the first game NBC had, it was the first game of the year, and they didn't notice. Then the last time NBC right. had the Cowboys, uh, we got crushed by uh, San Francisco, so you couldn't talk about yeah. the Cowboys anyway. Man, they were having a field day. Collinsworth, and I like Collinsworth, but uh, they were having a field day with the, here we go, and uh, – Collinsworth was trying to explain it, Nate, with the whole cadence thing, and I don't think he did a very good job. So let's talk about the cadence. Uh, that's obviously the phrase, right? The phrase that pays yes, for Dak yes. Prescott. Is that always present um, in the cadence? Is there always a trigger word or, or a trigger phrase like that? We have uh, all – back in the day when I played – uh, you, you, you've always had offensive line calls and the quarterback will give you chances to get your offensive line calls back. And sometimes they, the offense, the, the, the quarterback would help you, especially the center, because normally that's the center at 90 percent of the time making these calls. Well, I think Joe Montana did a little bit. I could be wrong. I think he did a little bit. Steve Young. That has always, I think, been similar to the West Coast and how they did things because they changed plays uh, as they walked to the line, whereas by our old offense, we didn't change plays. Gotcha. We just adjusted to whatever defense you gave us. And so when they see something, uh, that's why they like to hurry up and get out of the huddle. And so you would hear, uh, uh, oh, what's the great quarterback for Green Bay? Now he's in it with the Jets. Oh, yeah, uh, 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 Rodgers. Rodgers, you know, his green 19, green 19. You know, some guys be like, set, set, set. Here we go, here we go. Just letting the offensive line know, get your stuff in order because we're getting ready to go. We're getting ready to stop with all the talking, stop with all the, we, we, you know, because the players in, because it's kill, kill, kill. Yellow 19, yellow 19, uh, 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 reverse, reverse, reverse. We don't know what the reverse means. It ain't, it ain't necessarily going to be CD Lamb, uh, 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 Turpin, you know, reverse, reverse. He could be flipping the play from one side to the other if he got two tight ends. So they already got, then they'll say, hey, and then they'll slow it down. Ready, ready, here we go. And then they'll start his cadence. Interesting. So, you know, does the ready hut, ready <coughs> hut, you know, it's, it's, it's just, and only they know it because they have practiced it. Right. And that takes a lot of practice. So only they know what he said just before. The here we go. Yes. But does that not yeah. trigger the defense too? Like, oh, dang, time for me to pay attention too. But you can think you own it, but what happens when he go ready, go ready, go, and go, say it? Right. The offensive line don't move. <coughs> you think you don't got You think you don't got it down. You don't jump those sides. sides yeah. Cowboys got a – yeah. So they – he – now that he – uh, is loud, and our fans have gotten so much smarter, and, and they're quieter now. Uh, even when we get to the red zone, our fans are getting quieter now. I'm like, you know, I used to tell people our fans ain't the smartest in the world. People are like, oh, we got the smart. No, no, no. When your quarterback is trying to get a play out and it's a tight situation, are you cheering? You cheering? It's fourth and one. It's third and 18. And we and we and we're across the fifth, and we if we can get this first down or get close to this first down, we may have a fourth down that we possibly go. And you cheering, that don't make you a smart fan. That make you where your quarterback saying, "Oh my God!" All of a sudden, you got your right tackle jumping offside, yeah. or your left guard that you do jumping yeah. offside because you won't be quiet. Yeah. So, but now our fans, they are so in tune to it because I think now they want to hear. They want to hear. Uh, this quarterback uh, go through his cadence and do what he has to do. And uh, Dak is really uh, starting to master this offense. He's starting to move around. Uh, I'm, I'm loving this old Dak. I'm loving this Mississippi State Dak. Yeah. Uh, this is the guy I saw 
uh, back in college in his first two years in the NFL, man, move around, uh, give his uh, receivers a second chance. But that cadence thing, that is something that, that I think has always been a part of the West Coast. Gotcha. Uh, uh, I just saw, I saw uh, Brett Favre, when we went up there to play them. He beat us to death <laughs> with that. Oh, uh, he, I, I'm, I'm serious. He, I mean, he just, I think for like four or five series straight, he called the plays. He caught, depending on whether Darren Wilson was coming up into the slot or to cover uh, the slot back or to cover a tight end, he'd be like, ready, ready, oh, ho, 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 and he'll point right at Woody. Da, 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 he'll say something. Here we go, here we go. Uh, yellow this, blue that. And he beat us to death. Uh, I got hurt that game. I hurt my knee. And uh, that was one of the blessings God gave me to get out of that cold and not to take that whooping with the team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's another cold place up there now. Uh, yes. That, that That's really interesting. I, I get that, that it's a West Coast thing. And speaking of the West Coast, you know, you talked about A.J. Brown saying, hey, why don't we do these quick passes like the Cowboys do and stuff? Man. Like it isn't that easy, is it? This is this has taken no. a minute to get it fully installed, but it appears to me, and the offense scored on each of their first four possessions in the first half last week. Man, it looks like this offense has really begun to click with the West Coast. Nate, is that accurate? That is accurate because you understand we was getting the ball out quick yeah. the first part of the season, <laughs> but what everybody was saying, oh, we have no long plays, we have no long developing plays, we can't throw the ball long. Well, they had to get the offense in. They got the offense in. We got our offensive line playing well together. We got our running backs in sync with the offensive line. And now every now and then, you notice we'll drop back there with a seven-step drop and take it deep. So when you sit on us, they'll they'll take you deep or they'll take you mid-range or we got a nice outside running play that we can get a, a C.D. Lamb, Turpin, Tony Pollard, uh, even Rico Dotto has shown ability to get outside. So uh, Mike is calling plays, man. This is the this is the guy I wanted from day one to be calling plays. That is why I think we hired him from day one is to call <laughs> plays. I mean, and maybe they always had the Keller Moore thing there, and I had no, I have nothing against this kid. Yeah. But as I said, when he was leaving here. He has never shown to be a coach to care anything about situational football. Ooh. And that, and when you get into the playoffs and you your defense need a breather or you need to hold the ball right before the half so the other team don't get it back because they're on fire or you need to shut this thing down with four minutes, you can't just do it always with passing. You just cannot do it always with passing. You know, when it comes time to kill that clock, you got to sometime run the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, Nate. And along those lines, mm. if it's 40 and windy this week in Buffalo, that is situational football, right? The Cowboys need yes. to rely yes. on the Rico Dowdles and the and the Tony Pollards and those those two wide receivers that can run the ball out of the backfield. I mean, they're, 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 they need to emphasize the run game if the weather dictates that situational football, too, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. It, it, it's all a part of the game. I mean, it's certain passes you can throw. Uh, it, it, you know, the thing that you hated about New York, anytime you're in New York playing any type of football, is the wind don't blow directional. It swirls. It swirls. One minute it's blowing this way. The next minute it's blowing another way. It's kind of like playing in Chicago. You just didn't know. And so – you know, hey, second half, we we can pass a little more because we're going this way. Uh, this, you know, the first quarter, we can go this way because that don't always happen. So you you find out what your strong suit as a quarterback, what you can throw in these type games. You uh, pattern your receivers around that. Uh, you, uh, you try to have a, do a dominant running game, but I, I just think – your short passing game come into effect and all this getting the ball out quickly. This is this a help. This this will be that time where this type thing will help. And this is where Tony Pollard, with his ability to catch out of the backfield, should kill people. Uh, you know, have a great day. I shouldn't say kill people. And same way with Fergie. Fergie should yeah. be having that wide option like Jay, just run four or five yards off the ball, depending on what the safety uh the linebacker whoever's sticking him. 
uh, he run that, you know, have an option to in and out or either hit the seam, you know. So it's going to be a good game, man. Uh, Buffalo has underachieved. Yeah. It, it, it's two or three teams in this league. I think the Chargers have underachieved. Uh, uh, Buffalo is one of those teams. They have underachieved. I just cannot believe that nobody's gotten a handle on this strong-willed, uh, uh, ultra-talented quarterback. I mean, he's going to give you a pick. He's going to give you a pick. And if you and if you get up in his face and get him to chirp and get his mind off the game, he'll give you two or three. Yeah. So if you can stay poised and chirp at him a little bit, uh, bump on him a little bit because they want him to run the ball. And 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 I tell people that's right here. I, now I've never said, "Hey, Dak needs to run the ball." No, you've always heard me say, "Dak needs to move around to extend plays." I think this kid has lost that ability to extend plays at the right time. He wants to take off and run. He's not ex- getting out of the pocket to look to see the pass because even when he does that, it, he has some of the weirdest and craziest of passes. I'd be like, what are you doing, young man? You you are a better quarterback than the coach. Uh, when the coach, the New York yeah. Giants head coach, Dayball was his yep. coordinator. coordinator. Yep. Things were ran <laughs> much better. Uh, their co- offensive coordinator now is uh, Joe Brady. Mr. Brady, I'm not saying it's you, my man. Maybe this guy is arrogant and don't want to listen to you, but you, you, it's not working. Now, they won last yeah. week. In Kansas uh, City. They, yeah, they won last week. And, and uh, you know, they I think they got on Kansas City. I looked at a little bit of that film. I, I like what they did to Kansas City. Yeah, and that, that's a big one for them. Of course, they've had those, you know, monumental games in the playoffs and in recent years. So that, that was a huge one to go up there for the Bills and win that. Uh, and, and at the end of that game, Nate, uh, there was, a first of all, a wild play where it looked like Kansas City pulled a rabbit out of a hat again and, and won that game against the Bills. But it got called back because the wide receiver had lined up offsides. A call you don't very often see in the NFL, but uh, what you what you people didn't notice, you don't ever ever see this. But on on every play, it seems to me every play I've watched when I'm down on the field and so forth, that wide receiver's always looking over at the ref. Am I cool? Am I cool? And the ref will let him know, right? He Tony didn't do right. that, and consequently they flagged him uh, for for offsides. Man, that was a controversial ending. What? what how did you see it? You know what? You know what, Rad? You know, that ain't even worth a let me tell you something. And that's for real. I take my hat off to the refs. We want the ref. We and Coach Reed, that's why he changed this wording came Monday come Monday morning. Uh, that's why we haven't heard a lot from the quarterback. We want the ref to not make an obvious call. They go up on enough scrutiny as it is. And any fan that's Kansas City, I am a Mahomes fan. Yeah. I watch his games. I don't watch other – I'm a Cowboy and I'm a Raider, and I haven't been watching the Raiders lately. <laughs> I, but I, I, I will turn on some Cowboys and I will turn on some Raiders. I, you have to earn my right to other teams. And Mahomes have earned my right. Mahomes, don't do that, bro. You're mad at your wide receivers. You're not mad at the ref. You're mad at your wide receivers because in the biggest of moments, they can't bring that ball down for you. That That is why this kid is mad. And that's probably why you haven't heard much from him. And that's probably why Andy Reid said what he said after the game. You don't want the ref to uh, not make the calls. So, I mean, nah. What is right was what the ref did. And what fan is, you know, even chirping the other way. Come on, man. Get out of fantasy football. Stay out of Vegas and you'll be all right. Yeah. The uh, the one thing we saw Mahomes, I think maybe yesterday, Mahomes came out and said, 
He regrets, you know, the way he acted on the sidelines because, you know, it sends a message to the kids and all that. You you, you guys know all about that, that sort of, you know, people look up to you kind of uh, uh, attitude and stuff. And it's it's more acute for a quarterback. But the, the thing he said he really regrets is the way he responded to Josh Allen and I, I suppose that's another quarterback thing, right? I guess quarterbacks yes. have to sort of like coaches do, right? They have to go greet each right. other. I mean, the, the left guard, right. you don't have to go seek out the left guard from the other team nah, at the end of every nah. game, right? No, nah, no. Nah. Quarterbacks, even even when we played, Troy would, you know, Troy didn't like Philadelphia, Troy didn't like New York, but he always greeted their quarterbacks. It, it's always been the quarterback club. Okay. That was that was, hey man, you know, I'm getting paid after this year. <laughs> yeah. Hey, have a great season because I sure need to get paid this year. You know, they got that little secret <laughs> double handshake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, money, money, money. Yeah, exactly. You know what yeah. <laughs> Oh man. So yeah, but, um, but you yeah. know how how um I I was I remember when I first started covering the NFL because you know we're we're allowed on the field right there at the end of the games and right. I would see guys uh, leaving the field and they would see and, and, and you know they lost again I was covering the Lions at first so they lost almost all the time and uh and th- they would see college teammates and stuff man and come up be hugging on them I was so happy to see them big smile then I'd get in that locker room. Man, it was like a funeral in there. And I'm like, wait, I just saw you on the field. You were happy a minute ago. What the hell happened here, right? I wanted to get a good interview out that of you. Fake, um, hey, hey, that fakeness, bro. Yeah, I, the, I, the guys that the guys that hate losing, you would you would know. Because you like you say, you'd see them shake uh, you know, and I was so glad when Jimmy came. I was so glad. I, I love Tom Landry. I love Coach Landry. But I was so glad when Jimmy came. And uh, Jimmy said, "We ain't gotta shake hands. If you if you if it, if it hurts you to lose, you ain't gotta you know you ain't gotta shake their hands. Forget them. I ain't shaking no hands. <laughs> Why are you like? Thank you, coach. Yeah. And from that day on, I ain't shake no more no hands. Kidding. And I and and and, and, I, and I brought Rad. Listen to me. My gamesmanship is during the game. I do. I have never played. The only way you would get a dirty Nate." Is you hurt you try to hurt any of my stars uh just out of uh meanness uh, uh ignorancy I'm coming at you I'm coming at you with everything I got but you can't you can't find a player to say Nate ever slapped at a guy spit on a guy did an extra shove clipped a guy I would tell guys during games man we're gonna get out to your knees a little bit and people used to look at me crazy I'm like I don't want to hurt nobody I've never, I would never been, that was my gamesmanship right there. After the game was over, I'm going to play a good, clean game. I'm going to play as hard as I can. Then I'm getting off the field. If if you're going to judge me because I don't shake your kid's hand or because my kid don't shake your kid's hands, so be it. (laughs) Life goes on. So you would literally warn a guy. That yes. we're gonna we're gonna hey, During the be game, ready before for the this. game start. I'm say hey, yeah. I say bro, this game here, man. We gonna we gonna get at your knees a wow. little bit. Yeah, I I I, I just you know, coach used to get on me. Coach uh, Wise Tony Wise yeah. used to get on me. I'd be like, coach, do we gotta cut him? Do we do we got? And see now it's against the yeah. rules because we got a penalty the other day. They thought a guy was wrong. The guy was right. Our center was right. He didn't do anything illegal. You know. But uh, back in the day, boy, we, oh, my God, we go through their knees, roll them up. I, I like, man, I, I, I just did not want to hurt nobody. Right. That right there was, you know, and so that, that got to, but I tell people, you talk about gamesmanship. That was play the game clean, play it hard. Then if you feel like just walking on the field because you've done the right thing, that, that's your right. You know, a, a lot of times our media and our moms and dads who cuss and yeah. Did, let, let me tell y'all something. I, I do not listen to the fans anymore. I take the fans with a grain of salt because the same people that tell you to shake hands after a game is the same person that's up in the, up in the stands in front of their kids cussing, yeah. drinking, acting the fool. I've been to Pop Warner games, moms, dads, cussing, uh, acting crazy, which would you rather have? And I'm just being honest, as a parent. I'm talking about as a parent. 
I'd rather for my kid to see me up in the stands cheering for my team, doing the right thing, game over, walk away. I'll be up in the stands cussing, talking about the other player. I, I've been at college games where after games, these kids done played their heart out and the parents over there just talking about the quarterback. And t- I mean, is that, is that gamesmanship? I, and, and people, and, and one lady tried and gave them, what do you think about the quarterback? He was so sorry. The defense played so great. I said, ma'am, I don't do that. The game is over. Yeah. I, you know, so I, when I, when I hear fans want to chirp in about, uh, about uh, being the right type of person and being the right type of guy and oh, shake their hands. And I, you know what? I tell people right here, if you played as hard as I played and clean as I played, you can walk off the field good, feeling good about yourself. That, and that, that's, that's what I tell people. And people say, Nate, man, nice as you are, you didn't shake hands. No, I didn't. I didn't shake. I didn't want to shake hands to a man that beat me half to death. But I ain't shake Jerome Bryan. Jerome used to be like, well, see you later, home. We was homeboys. He was from Brooksville, yeah. Florida. I was from Orlando, Florida. An hour or two away. We knew each other in college. We knew each other uh, when we got to the pros through Mike Irvin. But I wasn't shaking his hand. I, that was some of the terrible whoopings I took. I wasn't shaking your hand. <laughs> I shake your hand when I see you at the Pro Bowl. <laughs> I shake your hand in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, I shake, yeah, I shake your hand in Hawaii. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah, you go shake a man hand. We're going to slap you around and beat you after death and got your job put on the line. And then be like, hey, we cool? Yeah. 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 Hey, so last thing. We we haven't talked much about the defense from last week's game and now facing what we know can be a very explosive Buffalo offense. Um, So let's just finish this up, Nate, because we're running a little long. Let's finish this up. Uh, What can we what can our defense do um, to make sure that they get inside of uh, Josh Allen's head and uh, and then make sure that O'Deron Bland gets another pick six? Osa, number 97, keep playing, make a few more bigger plays. Keep playing hard, son. You're doing you're on your way. Make a few more bigger plays in the middle. Uh, 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 and I, I liked uh, Parsons, even though he was there. I liked that he he got a sack early uh, to lead the team. Uh, I liked that uh, our, our safeties showed up and made plays. And uh, man, and I was so wrong on Gilmore for two weeks in a row. He's he's done that spot check and following a guy around. I was so wrong. I thought I thought the old man was uh, not very yeah. good at that. But I, I think it, I don't know if how a whole game. But if he spot check you, you know, to slow you down a little bit, like he did AJ Brown. That that man, that was nice to see our safeties. You know, uh, show up the way they did. Uh, Marquise uh, Bell. Uh, doing his thing, you know, and so uh, uh, Donovan Wilson, just to see our safety show up because they had, I uh, mean, I was I was checking milk carton uh, boxes on them guys. <laughs> I thought they, they was lost. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about the safeties, yeah. not Marquise Bell, yeah. but uh, yeah, I, I am so glad our safety showed up. And I'm so glad we got those three turnovers because turnovers <laughs> like sacks come in bunches. You can miss a two few games, you know, but every time we have turnovers, uh, man, I, it go up 40% uh, better chance of us there winning. You go. And on the road, you want those turnovers. That is the recipe for a victory against the Buffalo Bills. Another big one for the Cowboys this week, Nate. Been great fun as always. Love chatting with you. Love talking old times and hearing about you walking off the field without shaking Jerome Brown's hand. And, uh, man, we thank yeah, Niagara about, about for doing this, Nate. Death, it's been fun again. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Niagara. But like I was saying, you want somebody to beat me half to death, <laughs> want me to sh- so your kid can be happy. Look, your big noon got beat up, mama, and he's still <laughs> shaking the man's hand. Not me. <laughs> you, you let your kid get beat up. <laughs> Fantastic. We'll see you next week. Hey, Niagara, thank you. Thank you.